Okay, so we're going to start our uh, afternoon section. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Professor Tony Lee from from Taiwan National, National Normal University. He's going to talk about the Gedanken experiment to destroy a BTZ black hole. Let's welcome him. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, organizers for inviting me to give a talk here. So today I'd like to talk about my recent work with my collaborator, Zimbabwe. Uh, he is a, a PhD student at Caltech, and uh, Bonnie he is a professor at Stratton University. And uh, our favorite is uh, this one. Yeah, so, so this is uh, about a deduction uh, experiment to try to destroy the black hole. Of course, it not successful, otherwise we can do it and lose the interesting object. Okay. Yeah. So the motivation, I will give a long introduction to the motivation. So we know that uh, black hole contains a curvature reality, and uh, which cannot be left a uh, neck, neck, neck. If this particular uh, reality is neck, then it becomes some problem. We have uh, many problems our uh, neck reality. So. So in order to uh, to to hit this uh, security behind horizon, we need to require the mass charge and angular momentum of the black hole to satisfy this kind of relation. Okay. So basically, the mass should be dominant over the uh, contribution from charge and also angular momentum. And then when this equality holds, then it's called a true mass black hole. So once you uh, violate inequality, this inequality then we are going to the super extreme region, then the next security will form. And because we don't like the next security so much, so actually the panels proposed the so called uh, weak cosmic censorship, which say that uh, a gravitational security should be hidden behind the uh, horizon. Okay. So this implies that, that uh, we don't have this uh, super extreme record. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, people. Is the conjecture, so people are not satisfied. So they always try to think how can we make a, try to destroy a black hole and make a next reality. So a naive Chitanka experiment is uh, easy to think. If I can, we can, can we just over spin, over charge a black hole by throwing matter into that? For example, if I, I have a swatchable black hole, can I just throw it into a charged particle with a very small mass, a very large charge? But in this case, probably I can just uh, violate this uh, condition and then become, turn this black hole become a next reality. Uh, however, uh, even in this case, it's not so clear can we do that. Okay. So, so but, but there are some like, arguments, I believe. So, for example, we consider a charged particle with mass m, the charge b. Yeah. And then we try to screw this particle into the uh, extreme rate resonant motion break or charge break out. And in this case, the, this extreme R break out, so it's origin, or, or, already on the border of violating the cosmic censorship. So if we can just put this successful, put this particle in, and the weights and mass is more than charge, then probably we can do this. Okay. And, and, uh, and this is a, a very simple argument we can see. We cannot do that because for a particle, uh, for a charged particle, we, with mass m and charge e, then we know that the energy is, uh, is just an uh, this relation, okay? And uh, because the uh, mass is positive, so we know that this energy associated with this charged particle, it should be greater than e times the potential, okay? And this electric potential for the extreme operator is just equal to one. So in some sense, for a particle, which a uh, well, well, natural particle with always have energy large than the charge. So if we, we cannot have the other way around, so it's impossible to violate it or overcharge this black hole by throwing the particle. However, uh, this is just from energy consideration. Uh, so we simply just check if what the energy and the charge of the particle should obey. But dynamically, it's a very complicated problem. Okay, because Dynamically, if you put a particle in a curved background, then they have the same force. And this particle has finite size, so it also has the same energy. So you can imagine it's not so easy because, for example, this is the same force 
for a charged particle in the curved background. So if this particle moving around a black hole, then this black hole can, can the, the gravitational field for this from this black hole can act as an external field to this charged particle. And then once we have uh, this if this charged particle feel this force and this force is well, just associated with its position and velocity, then it can change with time. And if you have also temperature, then you see that you have additional term coming, you have an additional term we call a self force, which violates uh, Newton's law. And, and so with this, and however this self force associated with this uh, curvature tensor. And if this particle has a definite size, it may in fact react to the metric. So you can imagine if we couple this particle to the curve back one, then the, the gravity, the metric space time metric and the particle dynamic are just uh, correlated to each other. So, so it's very difficult to solve completely. And the final VPL dynamically, if this particle can go into the black hole or not. So, so it's, it's kind of a very difficult question. And also, we are just consider uh, the Schumann black hole. How about non Schumann black hole? Can we use the same argument to also show that we cannot overcharge uh, in, in the, for the non Schumann black hole case? <coughs> and it comes in, a, in, in 1999, comes this uh, Fubernese argument. And the argument that actually it's possible to overcharge a near Schumann black hole. So, so the argument is pretty simple. Basically, if this part, if this black hole is not extrema, then the potential is no longer equal to one on the horizon. So there is a small deviation. This deviation just uh, probably try how, how much away from extreme energy. Okay, so you have a small deviation. And then the relation between the charge and energy for the particle change become like this. So you will add, put this particle into the black hole and then the mass, it becomes mass m plus e. And the charge, minus the charge q plus e. You will get this kind of, uh, you will obtain this kind of uh, equality. So basically, we see that if the epsilon is large enough, then the, I can turn this into negative. Uh, we, uh, yeah, if you show me, uh, if charge is large enough, we can turn this, uh, this, uh, equa this quantity into negative. Then we can violate the cosmic censorship. However, this is not true because uh, it's not consistent to uh, do this kind of argument at order of the estimation because in here, uh, Hubert tried to argue that uh, he doing the first order perturbation. But we see that uh, actually, then the second order can appear. Because uh, even, even this here is just like you, you have a first order charge appear here. But because you require the charge large enough, okay, so you, when you put this in, you, you, this term actually, or this term becomes second, this term becomes second order of charge. So it's not consistent uh, to, to just uh, uh, consider it, it, in that context, we just include in the first order for from extremity. You need to do the full second order calculation in order to figure out this is the case or not. So, so this uh, this uh, about two, year two thousand, and uh, and this is a, a pictorial how we can see why uh, why this can be violent, and this uh, uh, WCCC can be violent. How we can repair. Basically, it's a Huberty's argument. If we are consider uh, extrema black hole, then this uh, extrema black hole is a uh, mass and charge. So extrema black hole equal to m equal to q. Uh, so it's something. It's if we try to put a matter into the part into the black hole, then in some sense we are for extrema black hole we are moving around this line. So no matter how we do, we simply just remain uh, extrema except your area come larger. But if we are uh, go a little bit away from extremity, say we are in a sub near extrema region, and then I do a linear perturbation. If I didn't count all the uh, second order perturbation together, the linear perturbation suggests that the slope will be different from the slope. This is a Lycombe curve. Then I have the possibility to just go beyond 
the Nikon regime and enter the super GMAR case. However, if I can successfully include in the second, second order effect, then the possibility the correction of the second order effect will just uh, change the direction of this tangent and then you actually move it around this way and then you never destroy a, a black hole by three in the major. And then actually this uh, uh, argument from the source and war in 2017, almost 20 years after uh, this argument come, come about. Yeah. So today, <laughs> I've many spent a lot of time to review this paper in detail. And then uh, we yeah, just do a simple generalization to the BTE case. Okay. So, so this, in this paper, I think they fit the uh, hook on this argument by just going to take into account a full second order effect. Okay. And also, it's important in this paper because uh, in previous, uh, most of previous study of this g experiment, you always just rule a particle matter. Because in the simplest uh, matter you can consider, it's just a particle, so you have the trajectory as a whole line. But generically, we, we can have a scalar field, we have many fields which need not be in the form of a matter. So can we have an argument which we can go beyond a particle matter? So if I can do that, in some sense, the big cosmic center should be proved in a more general sense. Okay, so this is why uh, this paper is important because in this paper, they carry out this task and uh, just uh, based on some variational identity, basically the energy variational identity. And uh, in some sense, the generalization of black hole first law of some of the dynamics. Usually, black hole, first law of black hole dynamics was considered to be for the equivalent case. But uh, they generalize this to including the infolding matter. So in some sense, you, in this kind of energy variation identity, you can find out how the uh, mass, charge, and angular momentum are changed when you throw in the matters. Okay. So based on this kind of consideration, then they go to the second order and the final order result. The password they find that there is no violation uh, for the cosmic censorship, at least uh, for the item mass wave gravity. And our motivation why we want to destroy it instead of BTD record, one, one way to learn this paper because uh, actually uh, I and my cooperator one consider uh, a, a naive, art, naive project at first that we try to study if can we destroy a trim up record. Because a trim up record is, uh, is more simple to study and then we do that. And after one year we find that <laughs> it's very difficult <laughs> and then we, we discover the paper by, by this uh, source and one, and then we decide to follow it. Okay. So that's why we, we started this, this paper. And, uh, and another motivation is like this. So the Jigdanga experiment to overspin up or overcharge the black hole, it actually an uh, operational statement toward the theory of black hole mechanics or black hole thermodynamics. And this was Israel's uh, argument in 1986. This is easy to understand because you, if I can overspin or overcharge, then I should pass the Ichima record regime. And the Ichima record actually corresponds to zero temperature. Okay, so in some sense, if we can really overspin the uh, sub Ichima record to become a super Ichima, then in the middle, I'm going to reach the Ichima record. Then in some sense, I just, uh, from the black hole thermodynamic point of view, I just, in some sense, approach the zero temperature regime, okay? And the third law of thermodynamics tell you that you cannot do that. Yeah, you cannot allow to do that. And also, we are considered a BTG black hole in ADS3 space. And the, we know that by ADS CFD correspondence, the third law statement actually corresponds to the third law of thermodynamics for DOS CFD. So, so in some sense, you will can successfully demo that uh, we cannot destroy the BTG black hole by this kind of Jibanka experiment. In some sense, we have proved that uh, zero of thermodynamics for the DOCFT holes, okay. Yeah, so, so this is uh, uh, one of the motivation. And also, in most cases, if you study ion gravity, you find that it seems very difficult to destroy the record, okay. So we decide probably we can add more ingredient. One ingredient, we go to the topological massive gravity and also including torsion and you see what kind of torsion can play the law in this game. Okay, so basically this uh, uh, introduction to my uh, talk. 
So the online does, <coughs> I will first spend uh, some time to review the paper by source and one, okay? And uh, it's contained two main parts. One main part is that they need, they need to divide the variational identity from, for first order and for the second order. And then the union is based on this identity, they can just using that to prove that to prove the uh, weak comics cosmic censorship conjecture by doing this Japan experiment. Okay. And then after that it's a it's main part of the talk. After that I will set up our topological matrix gravity with potion and uh, consider the BT breaker in this kind of model. This kind of gravity called uh, Make Baker and Mac Baker and model is a B model. So we, we consider break in this kind of model. And then we try to prove that uh, actually in this case uh, the weak cosmic censorship is also hold for most of the case. Yeah, we will speak out some uncertain part in, in this case. So so now I try to uh, review the matrix. Okay. So so uh, so this part is more formal. So please uh, bear me bear with me. Yeah. So the the idea is that um, what have some method using this uh, try to control noise current in the general setting. So basically, he introduced the uh, Lagrange by twist in, in the Lagrange end form and in the space time dimension. So so and uh, if you do the variation with respect to your fear, this fear including post metric and uh, other metal fear. For example, in this case, we also consider electromagnetism. So we have G mu nu and A mu. You, you will do the variation, so everyone in this room know that if we do the variation, we get the equation of motion plus a boundary term, okay? So usually we can use this boundary term to construct this uh, symbolic form. So this is what we did. So we actually get, a, uh, get this uh, symbolic potential from the boundary, boundary term. So this theta, if you, you don't know what this means in the general sense, you just think about a free particle of a particle with the potential, then this boundary term is simply just P delta X. Okay, then I need to control the symplectic form delta P with delta X. And, and then uh, the symplectic form construction is doing like this. You do two kind of variation. So you consider your field as a two parameter field. Then you do two kind of the variation, then this corresponds to this, this kind of the structure. Okay, so so you can just follow it. Then you also can introduce the symplectic, uh, you, <coughs> sorry, from this uh, symplectic potential and the Lagrange, you also can introduce the noida current, if noida current n minus one form associated with the Killing field or, or upwards of, if it's not a, a symmetry current, then the C can be arbitrary uh, vector field. If this can see the killing field, then this will correspond to the concept curve. Then it's why this concept you can easily to show this indeed concept it's concept up to uh, equation motion. So you, you can just do the theory derivative and it's easy to show this. So it's concept only uh, unsure. And then from this we know that if this is the case, then the current can be replaced as D acting on a concept chart Q can see. And the plus something which we call to the uh, equation, the, the proportion to the equation of motion. So once equation of motion was holds, then we don't have this term, then this is just a direct form. So, and then we try to <coughs> define, the, remember what we did here is not to just to do this formal again. We try to derive the energy uh, variation. So basically, uh, formally, what the construction is that it goes through the, it varies this current again. And then, by varying this current, you, in some sense, uh, related this uh, variation with, to this um, uh, symplectic one form. And then you integrate on both sides on some hyperspace. Usually, if for extreme hard breakout, it's some hyperspace. For, for the high trial breakout, it's some cursy space. And then, you, you find that this uh, this uh, symplectic form integration actually can turn into two, two terms. One term is just uh, a boundary term plus a buck term. This buck term is just a variation on this C to C. And the boundary term here, we are going to use to uh, calculate the ADM quantity. Okay, so, 
So if you don't understand this, you can follow the, the particle case. So in this case, we have defined a Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian is defined through this uh, symplectic, uh, symplectic n minus 1 form. So we define Hamiltonian. It's just like you define Hamiltonian in the delta, x, delta p x dot minus delta x p dot. And then using uh, integration by part, you can turn this. Okay, so you know that this is a variation of the Hamiltonian plus some equation motion. So it actually, I'm just doing this thing, so I can, in this sense, this is some kind of the Hamiltonian. Okay. And uh, remember, if uh, now can see the killing vector here, then then uh, L can see phi equal to zero. Okay. So suppose we also uh, uh, assume that the major field is also uh, uh, the middle the killing the killing vector field. Then because uh, this uh, symplectic form is in some sense a bilinear structure, so it's one argument equal to zero is equal to zero. So if this is the case, then we we finally identify uh, arrive this kind of condition. This quantity equal to this delta q c to c. And the point is this uh, property, okay? It's not so clear, but then uh, we can see that. Suppose uh, if this uh, C is a killing fear, is a top line killing fear, and plus some uh, 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 angular direction, okay? Then actually you, you can check that this equal to the variation of the mass, ADM mass minus omega s, uh, 18 times the variation of angular momentum. So if you, Evaluate this guy in the in asymptotic in infinity actually it just give you the variation of uh, the mass and angular momentum. Okay, and <coughs> and this has a form at the first order. Yeah, and we can do we can go for the second order. Okay, but in the second order we need to define a so-called canonical energy. Okay, later we will find that this canonical energy is nothing but the gravitational and the electromagnetic flux. Because once you go over the second order, then you, when you do the perturbation, then you know that you through the major into the black hole, then later the gravitational wave comes out. And then this gravitational wave can, carry the, can, carry the, can be put in the form of a flux. Then this canonical energy, in some sense, just uh, capture the, the gravitational and the electromagnetic flux. And uh, it's different from previous one, because in previous one, uh, you, you you only have this in the phi, but in in this current energy case, you are acting this uh, linear to um, delta phi. Okay, so it's one order smaller. So this point is over a second order. And then we can just uh, vary the first order identity and, and arrive at second order variation identity. And, and in, the, in this case, we find that the second order identity look like this. So again, by this term, we can evaluate this term as an infinity. Because it's a boundary term, so one term is an infinity, the other term will be on the horizon. And so if we evaluate on the infinity, then we see that this term will come to the second order variation of mass and the angular momentum. So, so basically, we, we have derived, we have tell you how we can derive the variation of energy and the angular momentum. Of, of, or even charge, I haven't tell you how to vary the charge yet. And now we, because everything is so formal, so let's go to the concrete by consider concrete theory, which are Einstein, Maxwell theory. So in this case, uh, you can just uh, calculate, especially this, uh, all this quantity. So we, we find that, uh, and this part, this sheet, for example, this term contains two, two parts, one is uh, associated with uh, Einstein, Theory. The other one associated with EMM. Okay, and then we find that, for example, Q Q is look like this. Uh, this is just a number acting on the C, and this just this guys. And also we can evaluate C. And the C, as we say, is proportional to the equation of motion. And and then this one characterize the equation of motion. If this equal to zero, then this is the equation of motion with Einstein field. So actually, this characterize the major up additional to the electromagnetic element through into the black hole. And also we have the charge, so this the current uh, through into the black hole is also associated with the uh, 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 equation motion. And then we can do, if we do the variation, we can do the variation on P and, and 
the thing. And then we remember that uh, one thing that uh, the killing vector field is uh, it's equal to zero um, for the maximum breadth of at the horizon. So if we're using this condition, we find that the CH10 I can see CH10 invariant on the horizon is just simply just finished. And, and in this case, uh, if we evaluate the boundary at the horizon, we find that uh, we don't have contribution coming from here because previously we, we have two contributions. Okay, so if, if this kind are always equal to zero, for example, then we don't have contribution from here. We only have contribution from this term. Then we find that uh, this way, this term will give you the uh, PDX, or here I write kappa D theta AB. A, AB is the uh, area of the horizon. Theta AB means that you, once you sort of make it in, then you have the change of the uh, record size, and it's uh, reflect in this term. And, and also, the uh, EMM power of this uh, charge variation, conserved charge variation, actually give, give you the uh, potential times the charge associated with the horizon. So, so by using this kind of uh, uh, fact, we, we can just uh, write out this uh, first order variation identity. So, so we, we have this. So in some sense, usually if we consider uh, thermal equilibrium, means that we don't do anything, we consider eternal breakout, then this breakout is in the thermal equilibrium. Then we don't have measure, so this is equal to zero. Then we get the first row of uh, break off some of the break off mechanics. But now we have measured, so you can, this equality is very nice because it tells you how the thermal equivalent was, was break down by three in the major. Okay. And uh, similarly, we can get the second order result. So the second order result, we have similar things, but with additional time coming from the canonical energy. This time, the second order effect by three in the major. But this additional, additional, additional term is coming from the flux. You have additional flux, uh, either gravitational wave or electromagnetic wave going to the black hole. So, so you see that you have additional term coming from here. So, so this part, this term is important. This one, this term was missed in the early argument by Hooper. Without considering this term, without considering the, the flux effect, then you miss some term in the second order declaration. So with all the preparation for deriving the identity, then the variation identity, then we can now consider the, the, the procedure to, to perform the Chipotle experiment. So basically, uh, this uh, problem was uh, well, well organized. So we, we threw matter in a more simple case. So basically, we threw the matter only for a period of time. Means I, 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 we only consider the matter going to the horizon and uh, some finite interval. So, so, so in some sense, for example, the major star from this cosy surface and the past, this, this, the horizon only in this finite time. And <coughs> in particular, at early time, we assume that there is no major going to the black hole. Okay, so there is no fluctuation. So in some sense, you don't have fluctuation of your configuration. Then we can choose a particular cosy surface. We choose this ray line as our, uh, our hypersurface because if we consider a three mile hole, we don't, the horizon in some sense is degenerate, so we don't have uh, bifurcation surface. So we, we, instead, we don't have cosy horizon. So, but we choose this kind of hypersurface, so, so this matter only comes in at, the, at this finite interval. And after that, then no matter, then, then it's the, the, the fluctuation will go down and then approach. Uh, a stationary break of other stationary break of calculation. Okay. So then we, we use this setup then we can we can just see how we can show that the uh, we cost me censorship was preserved. Okay. So so for example in this uh, for extreme R break hole case, uh, we know that the extreme R break hole case that we particularly set up this so that at early time we don't have this uh, variation. We don't have uh, Area variation, we don't have charge variation, and then we can define, and also we can define delta Q, uh, some delta Q in this way. 
This is from Delta J. Delta is from Delta J. Basically, sorry. Basically coming from uh, coming from this term. Okay. Basically coming from this term. So we have two terms, but in particular, I focus on this term. Then I can show, I can define this, this variation as some times this volume integral becomes a charge. Uh, it, this becomes a charge, and then a a a to c a define a potential at the horizon. Then with this, I define a delta q. Then one one of the terms can be moved from this side to become this. So in some sense, there's some there's some charge going to the horizon from a major field. And, the, and the, so your variation identity becomes this, equal to this, okay? So this part is more easy because this part simply just tell you your change of the stress tensor and the times C A K B. A K B. C A is the uh, hidden, uh, hidden fear around the horizon. And the K is the, give it, it, it K is the direction of location, but on the horizon, they are proportional to each other. So, in some sense, this uh, condition become uh, if I can replace KB by K, K, KB by KCB. Then, uh, if this energy obey this uh, uh, positive energy condition, this term will be positive. Yeah, KB may not have some negative uh, sign to compensate. So, so if this means that if the uh, matter obey the non-energy condition, then uh, this. Uh, that right hand side, left hand side will be greater than zero. Okay, and then we can using this uh, fact to check the uh, the the weak cost mean censorship. So remember, omega h in in this case for the for for uh, curling one breakout, it look like this. Okay, but we are considering extreme R breakout, so R plus equal to m. So in this case, this square R plus equal to m. So, so we can get this this equation, this inequality will turn into this inequality for the three mass case. Okay, and and uh, if we check, if we look this in relation more carefully, you you will find that this inactor condition that we cannot we cannot sorry we cannot buy the, the we cost me censorship. Okay, so this is the type of we cannot buy the cost me censorship because if we want to buy the cost me censorship. The change of mass need to obey this condition. They cannot obey this condition. You need to your change will be smaller than the change of the charge. And then you, you 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 do you you evaluate this. You find that this relation is nothing but this relation. Yeah. So so we find that uh, by energy variation inequality, we, we find that it's just for make sure the we constant energy. Yeah. And also, this, this equation also implies that uh, the perturbation just uh, will change, will increase the area of the on that string. So this, this, uh, this condition also implies that if we, put, we do the perturbation through the meter into the black hole, then the trajectory will move along the light cone direction upward. Because in this case, the mass will increase and uh, your area of the black hole increases. But it's remain extrema, so you, you cannot just change change the uh, extrema breakout into the next behavior. So this is for extrema breakout, so we basically just reproduce the early argument by screwing the particle. Now this, we are just require the major fear of the non-edge condition. We don't need to require it's just a particle type of major. Okay. So this is more general. <coughs> so and then we can move to the, consider the second order effect for the Nanichuma breakout. So for the second order, for the Nanichuma breakout, we have the bifurcation surface as a horizon. So so now this is the Cauchy surface. But again, I require the matter also only falling into the breakout for a finite interval of time. And so that at early time, there is no fluctuation of major field in, in, uh, near the horizon. And the data we consider BTE breakout. So we will follow the same way. So for the extrema breakout, we, we have this kind of Penrose diagram. So we also have the similar things. The only difference is that in, in, in this case, we have the contact boundary. Yeah. But in the, in the, in the free space, we, the 
uh, Zimbabwe infinity in most our library. And then this for the Manichuma breakout. We have not many copies, but if we only focus on this copy, we actually just follow the same uh, consideration. So, so now we try to destroy a near HMR break off. And uh, to do that, we first assume that we, all, in fact, we, we need to assume that we actually optimally uh, perform the first order variation. This means that the inequality, the inequality was saturated for the first order perturbation. So if we assume this, and then we're choosing the Cauchy surface. So in this case, the same as before, if we choose the particular Cauchy surface we have described, then there is no change of uh, area and charge, uh, second order. Okay. And then we can define a second order uh, change of the charge due to the charge method flow into the black hole. Then the second order variation identity becomes something like this. Okay. So again, we have the same condition term here. So if this uh, second order variation also obey the nine condition, then this term is positive. So this means that I, I, we get an inequality means the left hand side here it should be greater than the canonical energy. Yeah. So to uh, further simplify, then we need to evaluate the canonical energy. And at least evaluation of current energy on the horizon. There's two parts because we have two, uh, our Cauchy surface contains two parts. One is on the horizon, the other one is sigma uh, one. So the first thing we consider on the horizon, so basically we, it's just a method going to the horizon. Uh, so, so if we do this case, we, we find that after many factors, we find that you get this kind of return for this uh, kind of energy on the horizon. So basically, the first part was just a gravitational wave flux going through the horizon. The second part was just an electromagnetic flux going through the horizon. So in both cases, they should be positive. So, so this trend should be positive. So, so the contribution from the horizon part would be positive. So it's enhanced more on this inequality. So the remaining things is we want to calculate this guy, this uh, current energy associated with the late time Cauchy surface, okay. And then uh, we don't evaluate directly. Instead, we uh, here the source and what they have the clamp clever way they introduce the another assumption this called so called linear stability assumption. So linear stability assumption saying that any source free solution because at the day time we don't have method, so the equation of motion will be source free. So any source free equation to the linear anti equation. It's simply just approach a perturbation term for another curly man record at a sufficient rate time. So if we have this fact, it's very, uh, we can simplify our calculation. So basically, with this assumption, we can replace the delta phi by delta phi kn. So originally, it's delta phi, but in the rate time on the sigma 1, it's just a perturbation approach to the curly man record. So we can replace by delta phi kn. And also, because then they know flux, okay. So so actually, at the time they know flux. So we simply can just this delta phi can is a stationary solution. So this solution have no no flux for the whole time. So I simply just replace C one by whole C. And then this means that no flux means that they know other fluctuation at second order. So I simply set all the variation of second order, most of the variation of second order equal to zero. So at end of day, this trend was simply just equal to the uh, second order trend of the area. So I simply need to just calculate the second order uh, variation of the area for associated with the curly one record. So if I do that, and, and, and for, for the below, I will only consider the, the Benson and Nordstrom record, because otherwise the expression more tedious. So for the charge breakout only, the area is just four pi times r plus squared. Then you simply just do the h bar algebraic calculation by do the second order variation. You, you find that you get this kind of term. And then you remember that you need to count kappa, kappa like this. So, so in the end of day, by combining together the uh, expansion epsilon, you find that the, the leading term on the right hand side is just proportional to the r cube squared over n. 
So then we can, based on this, we can check the weak cosmic censorship. So we check the cosmic censorship for this one parameter framework. So basically, I just introduced the change of the uh, perturbation up to the second order, both for mass and charge. So I require this code to be greater than zero in order to preserve the weak cosmic censorship. Then uh, if we, you just, so you just go ahead to calculate this one. And uh, of course here you mark the second order uh, change of mass and charge. But remember we have this relation to relate the second order change of mass, charge, and angular momentum. For example, here we don't have angular momentum, but we have relation, this relation to relate the second order change in terms of the force of the quantity. So after uh, doing this, if we only take into account this change up to the first order, then we reproduce the full point result. Basically, uh, we, we see that if we, only, we didn't take into account the second order lambda, then we basically can reproduce the full point result. We can buy the constant censorship by turning enough charge of the delta Q, enough delta Q. However, if we take into the second order, we find that actually I get a complete square. Okay, so. This is uh, both second order induction and lambda, then I get a complete square. Then we, we see that the cost fee censorship is preserved automatically. So, so this is a nice thing. So everything, up to this now, everything is done. Yeah. So I basically reviewed uh, the main argument of this paper. Yeah. So the remaining few minutes I will just uh, introduce. Uh, OK, here I, I put a remark. So they also show that actually, for some spatial case, uh, this space okay is uh, dropping the charged particle from infinity to curve break hole along the break hole symmetry axis. And uh, then uh, in this case, we actually can evaluate the second order change of mass. And this identifies the charge, the energy of, uh, of this, the energy gain of this process. And then it's ba basically this quantity is proportional to delta Q squared. And the turns out nicely, you can sh show that. This corresponds to a second order self force effect. This is a self force. And then, because you drop this particle from the infinity to, to the angular horizon, it done so much work. So, this is work done by the self force. It's equal to this part. And also, this particle has finite size, so they uh, uh, this kind of self energy. However, these particles are living around, around the horizon. So on the horizon, I have the potential uh, times this uh, RP, this size of particles. So basically, in an electric field. And then, by this, is a potential. Then by this, you find that uh, you, you, you get a self energy like this. So if I you add these two terms, actually you produce the uh, minimum of uh, the field by source and water. So, so it's, a, it's a nice thing to show that actually, in some sense, even we don't do anything dynamically, and, uh, but this very are then in known the self force and self energy. Yeah. yeah. So then I will switch here to our model. So, so basically, we consider a three dimensional model of uh, topological mass and gravity. So, so the first three terms is the typical uh, Laplace for the topological mass and the gravity, TMG. And the last term is a torsion term. So we basically introduce a torsion term. So there are two parameters. One parameter is called theta t. The other parameter called theta l. Is a, if we tune this, we, this is a parameter of the TMG and this parameter of the torsion. Then the equation of motion, you can, from the action, you can write down the equation of motion. Then the equation of motion can be simply solved by this one. And remember here, omega a is getting one index, but it's actually coming from the spin connection. And the I is coming from the Riemann curvature to form. And then you can just, uh, you, you find that equation of motion from this uh, one was solved by this. And these two quantity T and R, is like the combination of cosmological constant C R T and C R L. And this, these are actually the actual portion of this model. Okay. And these are actual curvature radius of this model. So, so it's something, uh, the, the original T is the original theta and theta T are not the torsion and the, and the associated with the chirality. So basically, these two quantities, this is with T associated with the real curvature and the curvature radius. And, and uh, so 
And for this model, this is a very general model, but we only consider three limits. So one is uh, the Einstein gravity. Simply, we just turn off these two parameters, we go back to Einstein gravity. The other one is an interesting one, it's called a chiral gravity. Because most of the model contain cost. So we only consider three limits which can contain cost. And so the chiral gravity is one of them. So in this case, we need to set the torsion equal to zero. And uh, we, we need to go to a critical point. Otherwise, we have a cost. So we go to this critical point, we don't have cost. And uh, the other one is the torsion you know, chiral gravity. We do the other way around. We, we take this limit first, go to a critical point first. And then we find out in this case, the torsion is not equal to zero. So the limit is, the order limit is important. Okay. And uh, in this case, we find that we can solve the BTG solution. However, this BTG solution is, is interesting because uh, it's not in terms of original uh, cosmological constant. Actually, it's in terms of effective cosmological constant. It's just T squared plus R divided by pi squared. And then you can calculate the horizon and the Hopkins temperature, angular velocity, and surface gravity in terms of this new cosmological constant. And, and then we can simply uh, follow uh, uh, what's uh, way to control the uh, energy variation identity. So you, you find that uh, we get a similar thing. Okay, it's said the ADM quantity is not conventional because uh, we have this uh, uh, transaction coefficient and also the effective cosmological concept. So the, the ADM quantity is different. Also, the Entropy does not equal to the area of its reflection. And actually, this was done by earlier by uh, Holding and his student in 2018. And then I will skip the detail. We simply just follow the same procedure as we did for the source and one. And and then we can derive the we can derive the, this uh, first order identity. And then we see that the first order identity contains Usually we only have straight we only have straight tensor, but here actually this time is straight tensor. This is called a spin ten, angular momentum tensor. So this time new. So so we know how to impose the energy condition for this. We don't know how to impose the energy condition for a spin angular momentum tensor because uh, this spin angular momentum tensor only happen in the first order formation of torsion gravity. So so this uh, this is new. So. So if we, we don't consider, if we consider torsional gravity, we have this term, then the energy condition is not so clear. So, but there is a possibility, we assume, for example, they also obey some part of energy condition, condition, then the whole thing is, is positive. Then there is a possibility to violate the cosmic censorship. Okay. But if we, we assume that we only consider Einstein and chiral gravity, then we don't need to worry about this term. And then we can simply set it equal to zero, then we have this. And the, for extreme R breakout, we don't have this term. So it's simply, you just see that the, the energy condition just uh, factorized. So if we require this to be positive, then we also need to require this to be positive. Okay, yeah. So, so we can, if, if, if then we can consider with cosmic censorship by also doing the checking this uh, condition for the we cost me censorship. And now it's uh, doing something like this. So we see that if we cost me censorship we need to be whole, then we need to require this. Because this kind is that proportion to this kind and this to be quality, then we also need to require this quality. So there is a possibility uh, the the if we don't care about this time, there's a possibility of this time touching will buy the cost me censorship. But for Einstein gravity we see that uh, and the color gravity is not possible because then you can show that it's turning over the yeah. And uh, and uh, then we can destroy a uh, near extreme R breakout. So for color gravity, actually, it turns out it's trivial because for color gravity, the mass and the angular momentum obey this kind of relation. And uh, we know that the fourth order variation is optimally, optimally done. It means that uh, it can always move around the constant entropy. Uh, solution. So if we entropy constant, then you, you, you vary it, then we find that this 
we obey this relation. So the delta and delta lambda is a proportional to this constant. So in some sense, this, um, this has a constant uh, slope. So in some sense, you pick up solution is always moving along this. You will not move this along this way. So you will have the extreme outbreak over here. They never move, move it along this way. So in the chirography case, then everything is tripping. And uh, for anti-gravity, uh, it's almost, almost the same as uh, before. And it's even simpler because we know that in anti-gravity, we don't have propagational degree fit like this for, for color gravity and for uh, anti-gravity. That is mean that we don't have flux. So it's simply just an entropy contribution to chronic energy just finish. And then you can follow the same thing to do, to do the check. And after we found the check, we find that uh, the cosmic censorship hole because uh, we can complete a square by considering the full of the second order. Yeah, so everything is perfect. Yeah, so, so this is what we show. We will really just uh, move around this. Yeah, so I quickly conclude my uh, talk. So basically, we review this uh, source and what's and paper, so uh, it's wrong. And uh, this proof is simply that based on a variation of energy charge and speed up to the second order. And uh, in this way, we can bypass the difficulty of dynamical consideration. And uh, we also extend this uh, to a more general model, and uh, we find it's true. And also, our uh, result implies that the third law of thermodynamics is true for second two dimensional steps. Thanks. So is it possible to directly prove this in CFT? Uh, I think CFT is more difficult. In CFT, sometimes you can think about the matter in, in some coolant. So it's through a coolant into a, a radar bar to reduce the temperature. But uh, you need to understand the interaction between the coolant and the environment. But in gravity, we, we actually didn't do a really dynamical study based on the variation. So I'm not so sure if we have the same way of doing this kind of energy variation in the CFP system. But in gravity, it's not way of the right, so we can do that with this. Yeah, the interesting idea is that the in, in, in VTE case, the curvature of congruity is not harmful because it, it, there is no real so, curvature. So if, if the case is, for example, you have one example, one case no. you did it in a short part, if you can it. Yeah. So if it's violated, maybe it's still safe. Yeah, so in the philosophical, saying that uh, we know that the panel's original proposal is saying that because this has the curvature singularity, and it's harmful, so we don't need to, we cannot see it. But in, in the three-dimensional case, this is not a case. The curvature singularity, there is no curvature singularity, just simply a topological defect. So even we don't just screen it, it's okay. But but we, we find that it's still okay, the big cosmic censorship. So, I think it's an important case of ADSB CFT2. Yeah. Uh, Cali formula plays an important role. Yeah. So, do you expect that the Cali formula is still valid uh, even for the overspeeding or over such a case? Uh, I'm not so sure. I, I didn't consider this. Because uh, Cali formula is simply is using to count in the state, right? It's what you need, right? And uh, in that case, uh, if we have a, a, a next singularity, it seems in ivory we don't have horizon, so we, we don't need to count the state associated with horizon. You simply have the particle in the uh, three-dimensional case. But, but I, I'm not so sure from CFP side, I think they should tell the difference. I remember, because I've done something in the higher spin case, I think higher spin, in higher spin case, we also have a similar formulation, and then we calculate a partition function for the breakout case for the 
particle case, they have different partition functions. Yeah. So probably they are the different. Yeah. There is no question that's in from your game. Thank you.